guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so it looks like everything's okay. We've, we're having some internet issues today. Today's going to be a fun day. We're going to jump inside of Unity, and we're going to make a scene kind of look like The Shining, which is one of my favorite movies. But also, also, we're going to be using Portal as an inspiration for some of our game design. And in particular today, what we're going to focus on is the death sequence, making sure that the player can actually die, and it's punishing to the player. Okay? So hopefully... <laughs> Hopefully our stream's working. Are we good here, guys? Are we good here? We just had the, the stream cancel on us. By the way, today we are sponsored by Full-Time Game Dev, which, really quick, I want to say thank you to the new students who joined in our last stream. Massimiliano. Ooh, I said that pretty good. Jason and Joseph, thank you so much for joining the program. And by the way, guys, if you want to join today, there are two coupons available today to get full-time game dev, but also my massive programs here, totally free, which is 2D Art Pro, which I teach you pixel art, vector art, how to make 2D art for your games, and also stream my game, which teaches you how to reach out to streamers. I actually got Jacksepticeye to play my games, PewDiePie, MatPat, Game Grumps. I teach you how to reach out to these people and incentivize them to play your games. And also you're gonna get a free t-shirt as well. Huge course, 3,000 students worldwide, private Discord server. I've been doing this for two years. It is a great program, I can honestly say that. And also, just be sure to check out that coupon code below because there are just two available today for 50% off this program. All of this stuff you're gonna learn, 2D and art, 3D, tutor 2D and 3D art tutorials, um, how to secure funding from a publisher, how to hit the Steam front page, C Sharp, Unity, there's workbooks you download, how to get funding from Kickstarter, which I've done this multiple times, six figures from Kickstarter. So guys, I'm in the trenches, I know how to do this. I've been doing this, this is my job. Making video games from my home studio is my job. And I teach you guys how to do it. This does fund father's development. Uh, it's, it's one of the reasons why I'm able to live stream and show you guys how I make father. So your support means a ton to me, but more importantly, it does support you in your future. And by the way, if you're a student, let us know in the chat. Let us know what you think about the program. And I will see you guys on the other side. Let's go. By the way, guys, feel free to download my free 2D game kit below. It's totally free. It's my treat to you. I used this exact 2D game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days, and then I got to play it in front of his subscribers, which was really awesome. Um, so download that. Use it however you want. It's my treat to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what's crazy is in our previous stream, everything crashed. Um, even Unity crashed. It was so weird. Like, my stream crashed and Unity crashed. So we're going to open up unity but while it's loading let's work on our death sound okay so this is our death sound it's pretty good honestly i like it a lot it's it's definitely something that um well it informs the player that they made a mistake and that's that's a big deal you want the player to feel like they just made a big mistake okay now we can make this glass sound sound not so glassy but more like ethereal just dropping the pitch down and then maybe do some reverb on it right some big reverb here good something like that big room size here fade it out let's try that that's awesome awesome very very good guys okay um that aqua sound that we downloaded from artlist.io so we can just mix that. So it'd be something like this, maybe. No, it needs to be all of it at once. So this right here. There we go. There we go. So maybe drop that down a little. Cool, okay, and then blood splattering. And then some blood here.
And now we just need some heartbeats. Um, I think the play, we really need a player hurt sound as well. And maybe a body thudding on the floor. Um, so let's go to artlist.io. So body thud. That's great. Seriously. Definitely use that. All right. Very, very good. So we're going to bring that in as well. We just want one universal death sound that we can use really quickly. So something like this. So he'll get hit and then fall. And then we'll do a uh, sound. Ready? There we go. Good. Hey, I like it. Tracks, add new stereo track here. And then we'll do a lower pitch. Maybe negative nine. There we go. Is everything working okay, guys? Hearing weird noises. There we go. And that sounds like Reinhardt in uh, in uh, Castlevania 64, so I like that. Killer Clowns from Outer Space is coming out, Q3 of 2023. Um, no, I'm not trying to beat it. That's great. Okay, then we just need a painful uh, sound. Here we go. Uh, uh. That one was it. Good. So it helps, if, by the way, if you're ever gonna do like Foley sound effects where you do like a uh, sound, it helps to hit your chest. Because uh, uh, it makes your like breath come out. Like you really got hurt by something or punched or something. That's just a trick that I've been doing. And this needs to be lower. Here we go. We'll fade that in here. For some reason I just think it, I think it needs to fade in a little bit, that dud sound. There we go. All right, tracks, mix and render. I like it. And then we'll bring this down so it's not peaking. And then drop the volume down between negative 12 and negative 6. I think that uh, sound sounds a little cheesy. So what if we just... Okay, and then add some silence. And then now we can add a little bit of reverb to this little friend here. But we don't want it to be super wet. We want it to have mostly dry, a little bit of wet. That should be good right there. Good. All right. Drop the glass sound a little bit. All it is, all the glass sound is, is just a feeling of failure. That's really what it does. I think the the thud sounds a little too loud. We'll drop that down. The uh, sound is a little too loud. And then the beep sound. This right here. Boop. All right, almost there, guys. Mix and render, and we've got ourselves a beautiful death sound. Good, okay. 
that's a, about a four second death sound, which is great. That's what we want. So we're going to export this as player die. Player die. Hey, it looks like we already have a death sound. Interesting. Let's see what that is. Apparently, we already have one. I'm pretty sure I hate it. But let's just double check. Player death. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, so we're going to do this new one. Player death. Replace it. Good. And let's go to our player. I believe the death sound is... Where is it stored? Let's double check. Looks like it's stored in our statistics. There it is. Death. What's this one? What's this one? Okay. All right, so there's our player death. Then what we want to do is just play that sound, right? Um, We'll play it through our damage audio source. So right about here. Good, good, good. Play one shot. Yeah, we'll just do a, yeah, we'll do play one shot, that's fine. And that's gonna occur on the death right here. So damage audio source, play one shot, player death sound, okay? Um, let's try that out, see what we get. So some of you are asking, Thomas, how has the story changed with Father? A lot has changed with the story, a lot. And we'll be talking about that in future streams. Okay, where's my spider? Okay, we need to drag him in. Let's, let's bring in the walker, actually. Or how about the walker with the gun? because he'll kill me faster, and that's what we want. Let's drag in our clown here. So it wasn't very loud, was it? It wasn't very loud, and I'm curious as to why. Um, I don't know. Um, set it to one, obviously, but there's also this that occurs, um, which causes everything to go down. So I feel like what we need to do, it causes the, the, the treble to go down, so you can't hear anything. So I feel like what we need to do is we need to switch to the, um, well, we need to double check something here. Let's go to the player and look at which audio source we're using here, because I feel like we're using one that Hmm, I'm not sure so, I'm not so sure today. Let's double check here. So we have our audio source for player damage. Okay, so there's no output. That's good. But it's just so quiet. Hmm. It's just really quiet. Interesting. I wonder why that is, guys. I think it stopped something here. Ah, yes. Well, let's see here. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure. Switch to pain audio source, play one shot. Good. So there's this that occurs here, which is it's playing the hurt voices, right? But it's also resetting. So it's playing that heartbeat sound. I wonder if we want to just reset it again here and do the player death sound. We could try that. I mean, maybe set it to two. Let's see what happens, man. I have no idea. I have no idea. All I know is it doesn't, I'm not hearing it very loud, but it's like set to max volume. So something's wrong. I mean, we could double check here. Yeah, it's pretty high there, so I'm not sure. So let's, let's double check. So 
So I heard it there, but it wasn't loud. That's so weird. Hmm. It's not very loud. Let's go to our player SFX um, and see. Let's compare the volumes of all of our sounds. So we have our player hurt voice one. We also have the player hurt sound two there. So this is how loud this one is. And then the death sound is this loud. So it's not that different. Um, I'm curious what's going on here. Damage audio source. Let's make sure that that's set up properly. There's our damage audio source. It's right there. Uh, it is not set to 3D. Its reverb zone is set to 1. We don't want that. I don't think. Um, hmm. No, that's fine. We can keep it like that. But I do want it at 2D, so I don't know. Hmm. I don't know why I'm not hearing it very loud. That's a very strange thing. That's a very, very strange thing. We're gonna try one more time. Hmm. Well, well, well. It's really quiet. We can check its volume. Okay, so let's go to our damage audio source. It's uh, priorities, okay, it's set to one. It's set to loop. It's just not very loud. I need to make it louder in audio uh, audacity, I guess. I guess we just make it louder in audacity. Let's try that. I hate doing it that way, but I don't know what else is going on. Um, player death. And take a look. It sucks that this is what we're going to have to do here. So quiet it's so quiet and look I've even got it set to two here hmm boy I don't know we could try it we could see what happens when we don't switch to the audio snapshot um, and just see what happens um, and I'll also do that here as well so we won't switch to that audio snapshot and we'll see what happens, you know, but I don't see why it would be causing a problem because we're not even passing through that snapshot. So I don't know. Let's double check here. We'll double check. I'm gonna turn it down for you guys though. Look at that. It's still really quiet. That's crazy. That's crazy. We gotta figure this out. So it's really quiet for some reason. <laughs> That's all I know. Um, there's our player damage. It is not set to 3D. Maybe it's the reverb zone mix. I don't know, let's take a look. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. I'm gonna keep that. That's crazy. I have no idea what's going on. Damage audio source. Hmm. That's just really, really interesting. Um, yeah. Hmm. We're gonna do play one shot here. Um, 
We're gonna do that, and then we're gonna do play one shot. Yeah, 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 okay, I think I got it, I think I got it. You can't set the volume that way. Um, you have to do it in a one shot. So we can do a one shot, and we can do a volume of two. Oddly enough, I don't know why, but you can. Um, what's the issue here now? Player's effects does not contain a yeah, it does. There we go. Damage audio source, play one shot, player death sound, and it'll do it at the, at the rate of two. Um, I think this will make it louder, which sucks, because I don't, I don't like making my volume that loud. That's ridiculous. Freaks me out. It's fine, I guess. It's just so quiet. I don't get it. Hmm. Yeah. Remove spatialization from the audio component. It is. Um, it is. If we go to our character controller here and we go down to the audio source for the damage, it's set to 2D. So, I, man, I don't know. I don't know why it's doing that. Um, so, okay, I mean, it's it's fine. It's not like the greatest thing ever, but it's fine. Um, the next thing I wanna do is create a sort of a animator effect that basically uh, makes the whole screen washed in red and uh, very, very faint. Um, you can't really see through it. So we got our, our character controller here, and then we're gonna go to our canvas. And by the way, those of you just joining us, just remember that full-time game dev is 50% off right now. There are two coupon codes left. You're gonna get free bonus courses, my 2D course, which also has pixel art in it as well, and how to just do beautiful 2D art. But also, the course Stream My Game, which is how to get streamers to stream your game, like PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, Game Grumps, MatPat, I've done this. I show you how to incentivize YouTubers to play your game. And also you get a free t-shirt. Massive program. I got 3,000 students worldwide. By the way, if you're in the program, feel free to say hello in the chat. There is one or two coupons left below. Check it out, guys. Okay. So it looks like we want to make that red flash, okay? So we have a white flash, we have a red flash, we have a looping red pulse, then we're gonna create a new one called death, okay? So this is gonna be UI death. Red overlay death, okay? I'm gonna turn that on. I'm gonna go to my image here and just make sure we go to our red flash. There we go. We're gonna go full brightness here, like that. So it's gonna be this big old red here. And I feel like I want it to be a little bit brighter, honestly. So what I think we should do is we should actually just do the white. White square, and we're gonna make it red. Like that. Boop, just like that. That's all we've got, okay? And there's no way out of this. There's no way out of this. Um, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna have a new Boolean. It's gonna be called dead. And it doesn't need to loop, but it's just gonna take us from any state to red overlay death, okay? It's gonna be instantaneous, no exit time, no transition, take it to zero. But we go back to entry or our empty state if death equals false, okay? No exit time, no transition duration, and this will be if we are dead, then go to true, okay? That's about it. So we need to go to our script here. On die, we're just gonna say um, white flash animator dot set boolean dead, right? Set it to true. Um, <clears throat> then we respawn from last save. On the respawn, 
Um, we want to make sure that we set up. Well, actually, we could just. Hmm. Where do we set up this respawn? So on die, is there a spawn? Let's see here. Yeah, we could go to our load state actually. So this right here, we could just say uh, white flash animator set bull die equals false. That way it gets reset properly. Um, I think that's fine. So that's good. Is it is die the word? Dead is the word. So we need to make sure we do the right one here. Uh, dead is and it, it should it should always be a a variable like a boolean should be a noun and a, a function should be a verb. Um, so in this case, dead is a noun. It's a state of being, so it's a noun. Um, so dead equals true, good. Do I have any other die? Let's double check. Dead. Nope, we, we do not, so we should be good. So the theory is here, it should immediately turn the screen red when I've died, and we should be good. Okay, so let's double check. And then when I respawn, it'll go back to normal. Good. Awesome. Okay, so that, that felt pretty good, actually. Um, I think what we can do now is um, drop the character's um, head down to the floor. Um, so this is going to be interesting. Uh, one of the ways we do this is, well, let's take a look at our crouch function. So the crouch function is very similar, right? It sort of crouches the player down to the ground. Um, so you can see here, crouching equals true. Crouch is false. Hold on one sec. Let's double check something here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. So we're setting all these values here. Um, it looks like capsule collider center is being changed, but there also needs to be sort of an offset value. Um, there it is right here. Shoulder offset go to. Um, so there's a couple values, offset standing, crouch reduction. We also need one more, and this is going to be called um, well, I would actually say that, that you don't want to be adding any more values to the crouch reduction. What you want to do is you want to say, um, mm. let's see where this is being used here. It's being used in the camera controller. Okay, so let's see what is happening in the camera controller here. Oh, there it is, right there. Um, man, let's go to entire solution here and see what's happening with this shoulder offset go to value. So it's basically just a lerp value and we're using it somewhere. Where are we using it? In the camera controller, okay. Okay. There it is right there. So this is where it's being used. Okay, it's, it's constantly being updated. Um, so basically what we need to do is we need to say, look, if the character controller is dead, it's, it's gonna go to a static value down to the floor, right? So we need to say if player controller dot dead or is dead, do we have an is dead value? We do not, we can say if the health is smaller than or equal to or greater than zero, um, actually it would be player statistics. Man, come on, Thomas. So player controller, does it have a reference to the statistics? Today is a bit of a pain in the butt. Um, not my favorite stuff to work on today. This is painful. Um, if we go to our player controller here, we can take a look at our, hopefully we can see our statistics. Um, how is health being handled? OK, 
Okay, so it looks like we don't have a player statistics reference here. We really should. I'm surprised. Um, current document. There it is, right there. So we can do it in the game manager player statistics. Okay, so we can do it there. Um, so we can go to if the game manager dot player statistics dot health. Okay, we need to have a reference to it. Oh, man, um, is it health? Dot dead? Nope. Health text, not health text. It'd be max health. Let's just double check, make sure that that's the right value we want to check. There it is, player options. Man, that's weird. I don't love it. It's a strange word to use. Player options, okay. Whatever. Um, so let's go to our player camera controller. If player statistics dot player options dot health is greater than zero, then do the crouching, do all that stuff. But the moment where we're dead and our health is zero, uh, equals zero or it's even less than zero, the shoulder offset's gonna go to a different value here. It's gonna go to, uh, death shoulder offset go to. Okay. Yep. And it's going to be pretty fast too. Um, actually, not too fast. So speed it to about a value of three. So now what we need to do is put this up here. Okay. So this is kind of a weird, ugly way to do this, but I can't think of another way to do it. Um, so basically what we're going to do is, is it's basically going to be a crouch value. It's basically going to be a crouch value. Um, it's going to look like you're crouching, honestly. So you just sort of fall to the ground. Uh, but it'll be kind of slow. Um, and I'm thinking that all we need to do is go to our character controller here. Look at what the crouch value is. It looks like our crouch value, if we go to our, wet, our camera controller here, our crouch value is negative 1.4. So this is just an offset value that's added to the camera. Um, death offset shoulder go to would be something like negative 1.4. Eight. Okay, so let's double check and see if this works for us. And I'm also going to put a debug here because I know that it's probably not going to work. So debug.log trying to bring the camera to the ground. Okay, because we died, right? So if it's less than or equal to zero, bring us down to the ground, right? There we go. Yeah, we'll, we'll do a, it's called a yaw. Um, so we'll do a yaw and make the camera sort of, your head sort of goes flat to the ground. So let's see if this works. Good. Awesome. And it puts us right back, which is great. That makes me happy. Okay, that was... Pretty great, actually. I mean, obviously, that, that value was a little too low because we went underground, but I think negative 1.4 is actually fine. Oddly enough, you know, we could probably, man, I'd hate to do it that way, but we could probably just say, look, crouch. When you die, just crouch. You think we can do that? Why not? Um, yeah, it could be that that simple. Um, so if we go to our player controller, we can initialize the crouch. We could just say crouching equals true. Um, I mean, seriously, guys, we could do that. The problem is, I think I might want to have a little bit more control over it just in case. So I don't think I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, let's just set it to negative 1.4 for now and see what we can do here. Let's see how this looks.
That's great. Okay. Sweet. And it, it spawns you, which is great. But we also want to make sure we fade out the camera. Um, so what we could do is we have our little camera here. And um, hmm, or we have a, a, a we have a startup function here, level startup, and it takes us to this canvas, and then it does a crossfade. Um, the same is true with the game manager, I believe. The game manager should have a reference to that crossfade. It should. Um, so if it does, then we can actually just go ahead and initialize this crossfade. Um, but I don't think we do. What's it called? It's called the, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to do a search here. It's called the startup crossfade level startup canvas. Yeah. Okay. That's what it's called. Level startup canvas. I was working on this today. Level startup canvas. We're going to do a big old search for this value and where it's being stored. There it is. So it is being stored. It's being stored in the level switcher. Um, so we don't really want that. What we want to do is actually store this in the game manager. Um, hmm. No, we'll just do a get. We'll, we're going to do a, a, a find, okay? Because this, the name of this game object is always going to be the same. Um, so we're just going to find this level startup canvas and initiate initialize the fade out. So I usually don't like using game object find, but in this case, it's always going to work. Um, knock on wood, right? So let's go to our death, which is in the player statistics. Should be, isn't it? <laughs> is it? Um, I think so. die. There it is. So what we're going to do is after two seconds, um, wait time to load. Wait time to fade is really what we want to do. So honestly, we're going to remove that. We're just going to say, uh, we're going to wait two seconds, let you fall to the ground. Then we're going to initialize the fade out. Um, and we're going to do fade out dot set or dot animator. Let's see what, what does fade out have? Fade out, let's double check here. Um, level startup canvas. It's got this cool fade out uh, crossfade thing. Yeah, yeah, fade out script. It'll initiate the crossfade. Okay, so we need to do fade out dot crossfade. Looks like we don't have access to it. Um, so let me go to fade out here and make sure it's public. Okay, it's not public. And then we'll do a, um, looks like we have a scene transition. I don't really want to do a seed transition. All I want to do is just set the trigger to start. Yeah, because that should just fade it out and then fade it back in. Um, so we'll, we'll do that. We'll just set the trigger. We could double check here. If we go to our crossfade here, fade start, and then it goes to the end. OK, OK. Hmm. Yeah, we can do make transition. We can say if start, it'll go back to fade out, uh, the fade in. Oh, crap. Hmm. We'll need to look at that. We'll need to look at that. So the, I don't really like using triggers like that. So we need to double check here. Um, OK. Crossfade dot um, set uh, trigger start. So ugh, it's not my favorite way of doing this. So I'm going to change this to a Boolean. And it's just going to be um, fade in or fade out. Um, Although I feel like it should just go to fit. Let's let's rename this. This is going to be fade in, and this is going to be fade out. So it should go to fade out if we've already faded in. Yeah. Yeah. 
start, fade out, good. And then it'll go back to fade in. Okay, I get it. Um, so it should go back to fade in. Yeah, actually, I don't think we, I don't think we need that. I think that should be good. So as long as we hit start, it'll just go to fade out. All right, let's try it out. Okay, it fades in, good. Should fade out. It didn't, okay, so we need to wait. We need to do some kind of wait here. Yeah, that's it. So we're gonna do wait after we set the fade in. Yep, right there. After the fade out, which is just gonna fade to black, we're gonna wait another three seconds, okay? So that gives us a total of five seconds for this death sequence. Let's try it out. All right, let's hit play here. Let the fade out happen. Didn't happen, okay? We're gonna go ahead and check out our, our crossfade, um, which is our canvas here. Yep, scene transition canvas. Go to our crossfade here, and we're just gonna double check that there's no like null reference exceptions or anything like that. We're also gonna have our animator ready to go so we can watch it and see what's happening. Um, so let's hit play here and also watch our console. Okay. All right. A couple issues here. Um, crossfade.set trigger start. Okay. So let's do a little debug here. Debug.log fade out. We want to make sure it actually exists. Um, if it exists, then we should be able to set that trigger um, for the crossfade. And then also, I really want to get a debug of the crossfade itself. Um, so let's see here, fade out, and then let's just do crossfade as well. Um, fade out dot crossfade, and just see what we get here. Fade out dot crossfade, does that even exist, right? And then it should set that trigger. So let's hit play here and double check. Okay. All right, let's double check here, make sure we have all of our references. Okay, crossfade exists, level startup exists. So for some reason, that is not occurring. Is it start? It is start. Huh. I don't know why that's not getting set up properly. Hmm. It should do it. Huh. Wait, I've got two. What are these? I've got one in the level startup, and then I've also got a scene transition canvas here in our game manager. Dude, what? We've got two crossfades. This level startup should not have this crossfade. I'm using the wrong one. That's, I, I have a feeling that we don't need that. And it's really in the game manager, which means we now have reference, we should have a reference to this crossfade here. So that's gonna be scene transition, that's the game object name. So at the very least, um, we put that here, scene transition canvas, and now let's watch the fade out. That's weird. Okay, so I need to double check this. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's double check it. Yes. We got it. 
Good. So, just watch, guys. This is what we've accomplished today. And then it spawns you back. Very good. Okay. I love it. I think it's great. All right. Okay. So I know it feels like it was, it was a short stream, but we actually streamed for an hour. It's just one of them crashed. Um, guys, remember that there's, there's probably one or two coupon codes left for full-time game dev. This does support the channel and the development of Father, but more importantly, it does support you guys. And I can say that confidently because we've been running this program for two years with over 3,000 students. By the way, if you're a student, say hello in the chat. Let us know what you think about the program. You're going to get full-time game dev, but you're also going to get 2D Art Pro and a program called Stream My Game and also a program called Easy 3D. So two months of courses here. It's going to take you two months to figure out, well, what everything I've learned in the last decade of making indie games and doing it from the comfort of my own home. You also get a free t-shirt here. It really is a great program. You're going to learn a ton about how to start a game studio. And not only that, how to get funded by publishers with just a demo and how to get funded by Kickstarter as well, which I've done this multiple times as well. Kickstarter and publishers, this is a huge part of the course because I teach you how to make money, how to go full-time. That's why it's called full-time game dev. But also how to make games with C-sharp, how to make games with Unity, 2D art uh, for interiors and exteriors, character art, and also free t-shirt. This was really, really fun, guys. I will talk to you later. Cheers. Get over here. Get down. <coughs> hey, thanks for watching. By the way, if you haven't downloaded that free 2D game kit below, Click below, it's my treat to you. I used this game kit to make a game for PewDiePie in 14 days and I actually got to play it with him in front of his audience, which was really cool. This game kit is totally free. It's my treat to you and you can use it however you want. You can make a commercial game and make a million bucks off this game kit. I don't care. Or you could just use it for a hobby project. It's my treat to you. And by the way, if you haven't clicked like, that would mean a ton to me. Hit subscribe. And also, this is important. Hit that notification bell, here's why. If you get notified of when I'm live, you can watch me make my next game and let me know in the chat what you think about the game or any ideas you have. And you might just show up, your chat might just show up in the next video that I upload. All right, I'll talk to you later, bye.